Hi everyone, Astrea Love here and I wanted to come on and just do a short video to talk about um, witchcraft because I know that a lot of my clients and a lot of um, the people that I know are being hit karmatically um, with the evil eye. And so I wanted to kind of speak about this and my experiences with it. So um, at first I didn't believe in the evil eye. It was kind of like hokey pokey to me. Um, however, through my recent experiences, I can explain it as a psychic attack and it's so widespread because it can come it can come from somebody having abilities that they don't know how powerful they are and they're just sending like they're really angry at you they're sending their thoughts or they're jealous um so that's one way that it can be cast is just on accident just by you know looking at someone with an intense emotion and let's say that you have a very 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 uh you're very psychically active okay so our thoughts our emotions our energy is really really powerful and so we want to make sure that we're not throwing around negativity like that um towards people so that's one way that it can be cast uh the second way is by actually doing some type of like spell ritual and that um, seems to be a little bit more rare because it actually takes time to sit down. And I mean, you have to really dislike someone enough to take the time out of your schedule to sit down and do something negative towards that person. So that's the second way that it can be cast. The third way um, is an entity that you have karma with from another life can come into your life again and cast it that way. And the fourth way is it can be lingering um, just in your actual soul lineage, just waiting to be re-triggered. And so then you could meet somebody that you cast, let's say, in another life, you cast the eye on them and consciously or unconsciously, it doesn't really matter. But And then you encounter them again in this life and it triggers the same thing to come back and happen. Um, so there's a few different different ways that it can be cast either way it's serious it's serious enough that I'm making a video about it to give everyone some help now um my experience has been a little bit more extreme because I've had actual attacks by people that I don't even know but but groups of people so where a lot of people were just kind of building up the energy and giving it to one person that had like a name of a list of names on it and just started sending this stuff out so um, the first thing that I have found is when you return it back to the people that sent it, because really it's not your energy. And, um, the amount that was getting sent to me was it at the time. And even now it'd be extremely difficult to transmutate all of it. I mean, the thought projections on top of everything that they had conjured, it was very, very difficult to turn it all back into positive immediately. Um, so I had tried sending it back and, just when you become aware that it's actually happening and there's an attack going on, that's the first thing to going, okay, well, this is not my energy and sending it back. So the one thing that I have found with this is that if the people doing it have abilities, then they'll know that you're sending it back and then it just continues that negative link between you and those people. Um, so what I have found that actually does work is surrounding them with love and letting love cut any cords or any ties or any karma between you and the other people. Trying to stay um, out of the drama and away from these people. Um, there's quite a few side effects that go along with this, this curse. And so the side effects can be nausea, really bad bleeding like periods and cramping uh hallucination going to the bathroom a lot getting like a gray film over your skin um pain between your shoulders and the back um like walk-in experience so things would try to take over your body um 
And okay, so etheric, etheric snakes that have a venom that's very toxic, as well as etheric bugs. Uh, so what I wanted to do is just kind of educate people on how how this stuff is being kind of, I mean, it's what I have noticed is that as we become more in tune with the fifth dimension, we are opening up to fifth dimensional magic. And this is one of just one of the many types of fifth dimensional magic that I have encountered. The great thing is that we humanity have that direct link to our true selves, which is source, which is God. So we, it makes us the most ultimate power that could ever be. And that's where we draw our strength from. Um, and it's so pure that nothing can, nothing can stand up to God. So your true self. Um, so we have, that's one thing that's really good. That's on our side is that we have that direct connection. Um, and so we can draw upon that, that within our core to use, um, I definitely feel, and this is the hardest thing because, because these curses cause such a degree of suffering, like seriously, a serious, serious degree of suffering. So if you're thinking about ever sending one to someone, don't do it. Like, don't do it because it could kill someone. Literally, it could kill someone. Um, and forgiveness like if you send it that it's just going to come back to you whether it's this life or another life it's going to come back to you it's not worth it so forgive and it's it can be very difficult if you know while you're under an attack to not to not seek uh vengeance but i'm telling you like using love surrounding the situation and this next tool that I'm going to talk about, which is the circle sword and blue flame. And I've done a video on how to use this tool before, but we're going to go ahead and just do a really big clearing on witchcraft today. Yay. So, um, so yeah, if you're thinking about ever using it, just don't, not unless you really want to see that person really, really hurt. And I'm telling you that if you think that that's what you want, that's not really what's going to give you happiness. It's not going to make you feel good in the end. So if you do feel like you have been, you're being under psychic attack, um, definitely if you know who the person is, and because of course it's witchcraft, it's very, uh, they blanket, they blanket you from kind of trying to see. So it really takes someone, I mean, you really have to kind of know and be able to see to remove the blankets and the illusion. Um, so coming out from the other side of this, I'll tell you what I've gained. Okay. One, I'm still here. <laughs> Two, I am so much stronger so much stronger going through like being tortured 24 hours a day, literally for not really any type of reason. Cause I don't understand why anybody would do this to another person, but the amount of strength and stamina and endurance that I've realized that I have is a gift that maybe only going through and learning this type of experience could give me. Um, I don't want everyone else to have to go through what I've been through. That's why I'm making this video. So immense amount of strength, immense strength. It also, um, it also forced me to kind of look within myself to see why I was drawing this experience in, um, why I felt like, like that anything wanted to attack me, beliefs, just thoughts um, that I was holding on to. So it really made me examine and go within myself to see why this was in my reality because no matter what it is, if it's in your reality, you're responsible for it on some level. Um, so taking responsibility and making a change. And then also activating and awakening the magic within myself, um, which is fun. It's fun. And, and so I think all of us have certain degrees of different types of magic that can be used. And so getting to learn and work with these magics and this fifth dimensional magic, I mean, what? This stuff is awesome. So <laughs> being able to do that, it's really making me so much better at what I could do 
originally. So I started an online Etsy shop and I am uh, doing jewelry. Like this is a black tourmaline. My boyfriend and I um, work with crystals and stones and we create oils and things like that. And they're immensely powerful because we're doing it from being in our God presence. And so it's like magic and then add some God to it. And it's like God magic. Like it's really, really good. Um, but each crystal, each stone comes with a gift for every person. Like it has a gift for each and every one of you. And that's why we choose our, our stones. We, I mean, we think that we choose them, but they really choose us in a sense. So we just bring, bring those gifts out. Um, and, and we do higher self alignments and all sorts of just really fun things with with using magic, with using our abilities, and with using things in the physical in this world, like crystals and gemstones, and like oils, um, and ooh, okay, beautiful rings. This is a ring of light, so this is a ring of power. And see it that it's got that glow on it. So. This one, you can use the magic and the power of light to heal yourself and others. So, um, there, there are many tools that you can use if you're having this type of experience. Um, so, I just wanted to kind of put it out there. I will post the link to our Etsy shop um, on this video. But one skill set that you can use is a circle sword and blue flame. And this, what, how this tool works, it's so amazing. It uses the sword, which locks in the situations because you can use this on a person. You can use it on karmatic situation with someone. You can use it on witchcraft, whatever. So you lock it in the situation and then you wrap another energy, which is the circle around it. And so it basically just starts transmuting whatever the issues are until until it's done. So if you do feel like you are under psychic attack, then we're going to go ahead right now and just place the circle sword and blue flame in and around you. Um, this will also work for empathic energy. So if you have anything empathic or even a family member, anyone you know, if you think has anyone anything empathic that they're trying to kind of work through this tool is great for that as well. So I go to my third eye and I pull and I just visualize and imagine holding the sword of truth, Archangel Micro sword. I feel it because so much of magic is feeling and experiencing. Okay, there we go. And then I go ahead and I place it into my crown and so I'm going to go ahead and place this into your crown and the crown of anybody else involved in your situation. And as it goes through the crown, boom, down into the earth and it grounds you instantly. And expanding that sword. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and take the circle. So I'm just going to bring my hand up here. And the circle is now being wrapped around the sword here, here. We're going to go ahead and do all the chakras from above and below. Good. Okay. And we're doing you and anybody else involved in the situation. Good, good, good. Okay, and now the energy itself, whether this is in your home um, or being directed to you at any other place, we're going to go ahead and take care of the energetic part. So, boom, sword goes in and circle around it. Okay, locking it in and it's going to stay, 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 stay. Now, this is going to stay in this situation until all of it is transmuted, all of it's taken care of. Okay, so locked in to all of the situations taken care of. And now you can relax, take a big breath and let go. Cause you've done what you 
what you need to do. Now, any thoughts or beliefs that drew this in, we're going to go ahead and clear those now. We're clearing them, clearing them, clearing them, clearing them, letting go because it doesn't serve us to have thoughts and beliefs that draw this type of experience in. So we're clearing, 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 clearing. Okay, good. I see one of my little spirit guides in the back there just kind of smiling at us. It's so cute. <laughs> um, okay, so really important to clear whatever it was within you that drew it in. And we're going to go ahead and say a positive affirmation. I am clear and clean. I am. I am clear, clean, and loved. I am. I am free. I am. Un sunwa la kare e sasha na kia suna tua hai an wana kana hia salate. Okay, now this next that we're going to do is the greatest combat for the evil eye because it's using the eye of Ra. Now Ra is the Egyptian sun god and Ra carries within him the strength and the power of the sun, protection, strength, and power. Um, that divine masculine energy. So it's very, very powerful. So um, the right eye is the eye of Ra. So if you're ever feeling like somebody's sending you a talk right now, then what you do is, or what I do, is I say, I evoke forward the eye of Ra now. I evoke forward the eye of Ra now. I evoke forward the eye of Ra now. And then I just look out into my reality and know that not only do I have the protection here, but I have it here as well. And that all is well. All is good. All is well. We are safe. I am safe. I am clear. I am pure. I am whole. I am. Okay. So you can use this if you feel like you really need to address it head on right in that moment right now. So thank you for watching this video. Please uh, leave me some feedback if these techniques have helped you. And definitely um, I wish love to each and every one of you and have a beautiful weekend. Namaste.